a sound heard in many rural villages in Uganda calling people to come to prayer. Good morning. Welcome to Bishop Thorpe. You are one of us. Thank you for welcoming us into your home or wherever you are. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We meet in the presence of God who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain and heals our wounds. May I invite you to join in the singing of Cornerstone by Hillsong. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. On this fifth Sunday of Lent, Passion Sunday, the beginning of the Passion of our Lord, let us offer our prayers to the God whose love, compassion and friendliness has no sell by date. Lord Jesus, you call us into one family as your sisters and brothers. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have commanded us to love one another as you have loved us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you look for the day when the worshippers will worship in spirit and in truth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a special prayer for this Sunday. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world 
Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Psalm 130 Out of the depth have I cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to mark what is done amiss, O oh Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, in his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than the night watch for the morning. More than the night watch for the morning. O oh Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. With him is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. A reading from the book of Prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37, beginning to read from verse 1. The Valley of Dry Bones. The Lord's hand was upon me, and he carried me out by his spirit, and set me down in a plain that was full of bones. He made me pass among them in every direction. Countless in number and very dry, they covered the plain. He said to me, O oh man, can these bones live? I answered, Only you, Lord God, know that. He said, Prophesy over these bones. Say, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. The Lord God says to these bones, I am going to put breath into you, and you will live. I shall fasten sinews on you, clothe you with flesh, cover you with skin, and give you breath, and you will live. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I began to prophesy as I had been told, and as I prophesied there was a rattling sound, and the bones all fitted themselves together. As I watched, sinews appeared upon them, flesh clothed them, and they were covered with skin, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the wind, prophesy, O man, and said to it, these are the words of the Lord God. Let winds come from every quarter and breathe into these slain that they may come to life. I prophesied as I had been told. Breath entered them, and they came to life and rose to their feet, a mighty company. He said to me, O oh man, these bones are the whole of Israel. They say our bones are dry, our hope is gone, and we are cut off. Prophesy therefore and say to them, The Lord God has said, My people, I shall open your graves and bring you up from them and restore you to the land of Israel. You, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. Then I shall put my spirit into you, and you will come to life. And I shall settle you on your own soil, and you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I shall act. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ezekiel's prophecies come from the time of the Babylonian exile. The dry bones of Israel's hopes will live again. This is a prophecy of the people of Israel in exile and set, as it were, in the death and the valley of Despond. The hope is to bring them back to their land out of death. Prophet Ezekiel is asked, Mortal, O oh man, can these bones live? Can Israel come out of exile? What would our answer be? Some of us may have said, No, Lord, the nation will never come out of exile. And some of us may have replied, Yes, Lord, it can. You just watch me and I'll show you how. But 
Ezekiel's answer is, only you, Lord God, know that. He is told to speak the word of God and to call upon the life-giving power of God's Spirit. The word and the Spirit give life. The nation will come back to life by the life-creating power of God. We may also read the text of Ezekiel as a promise of our own resurrection brought to us by the Spirit. That Spirit is life and leads us into all truth, which implies that individual responsibility and a person's continued life with God matter, as well as the renewal of the nation. At this present time of COVID-19, we are, as it were, set in death, in exile. I believe the sovereign Lord who knows it all by the Spirit, who raised Jesus from the dead to life eternal, the life-creating power of God, will bring us out of exile, out of the valley of death. Sovereign Lord, we look to you to deliver us. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 6 to 11. Those who live on the level of the old nature have their outlook formed by it, and that spells death. But those who live on the level of the spirit have the spiritual outlook, and that is life and peace. For the outlook of the unspiritual nature is enmity with God. It is not subject to the law of God, and indeed it cannot be. Those who live under its control cannot please God. But you do not live like that. You live by the Spirit, since God's Spirit dwells in you. And anyone who does not possess the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then although the body is dead because of sin, yet the Spirit is your life because you have been justified. Moreover, if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then the God who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give new life to your mortal bodies through His indwelling Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please, Join me in the singing of the hymn, It is a thing most wonderful, most wonderful to be that God's own Son should come from heaven and die to save a child like me. It is a thing.
Gospel according to St. John, chapter 11, beginning to read from verse 1, the death of Lazarus. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man named Lazarus who had fallen ill. His home was at Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus had fallen ill, was the woman who anointed the Lord with an ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. The sisters sent a message to him. Sir, you should know that your friend lies ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death. Through it, God's glory is to be revealed, and the Son of Man glorified. Therefore, though he loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for two days after hearing of Lazarus's illness. He said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. Rabbi, his disciples said, It's not long since the Jews there were wanting to stone you. Are you going there again? Jesus replied, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Anyone can walk in the daylight without stumbling, because he has this world's light to see by. But if he walks after nightfall, he stumbles because the light fails him. After saying this, he added, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I shall go and wake him. The disciples said, Master, if he's sleeping, he will recover. Jesus had been speaking of Lazarus's death but they thought he meant natural sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. I am glad for your sake that I was not there, for it will lead you to believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go and die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been four days in the tomb. Bethany was just under two miles from Jerusalem, and many of the Jews had come from the city to visit Mary and Martha and condole with them about their brother. As soon as Martha heard that Jesus was on his way, she went to meet him and left Mary sitting at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now I know that God will grant you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said, Your brother will rise again. I know that he will rise again, said Martha, at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever has faith in me shall live, even though he dies. And no one who lives has faith in me shall die. Do you believe this? I do, Lord, she answered. I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. So saying, she went on to call her sister Mary, and taking her aside, she said, The Master is here, and he's asking for you. As soon as Mary heard this, she rose and went to him. Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at a place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were in the house condoling with Mary saw her hurry out, they went after her, assuming she was going to the tomb to weep there. Mary came to the place where Jesus was, and as soon as she saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, He was moved with indignation and deeply distressed. Where have you laid him? he asked. They replied, come and see. Jesus wept. The Jews said, how dearly he must have loved him. But some of them said, could not this man who opened the blind man's eyes have done something to keep Lazarus from dying? Jesus, again deeply moved, went to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone placed against it. 
Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Sir, by now there will be a stench. He has been there four days. Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you have faith, you'll see the glory of God? Then they removed the stone. Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but I have spoken for the sake of the people standing round, that they may believe it was you who sent me. Then he raised his voice in a great cry. Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with linen bandages, his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said, Loose him, let him go. Many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did put their faith in him. But some of them went off to the Pharisees and reported what he had done. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It is significant that Jesus of Nazareth raises a man from death. Please notice Jesus' genuine love for his friends in the wonderful sign of the raising of Lazarus, pointing to our own transformation. Christ, the anointed one, the resurrection and the life, by dying, gives us life. As Christians, we say, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We have been baptized into Jesus Christ's death. His promise is eternal life, the very life of God, which he came to bring already and yet still to come. The words of Psalm 130 say to us, wait for the Lord. Since Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God, died for us, death is something that we should not fear or be anxious about, for the best is yet to be. And as a promise, God has poured into our hearts the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And the Nicene Creed encapsulates what we believe who God is in himself. Beyond this lifetime, beyond this darkness that light, your cross is shining so people open your eyes the cross stands above it all Stands above it all 
In uncertain times The cross towers over it all The cross stands above it all I believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he was again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to God who alone makes us dwell in safety. For all who are affected by coronavirus through illness or isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies that they may make wise decisions. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For doctors and nurses and medical researchers that through their skill and insights many will be restored to health. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the vulnerable and fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. As the Savior has taught and commanded us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Father, whose soul loved the world that he gave his only Son, bring you by faith to his eternal life. Amen. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, Keep you steadfast as you walk with him the way of his cross. 
Amen. May the Spirit, who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, set your minds on life and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be always with you. Our final hymn is My Song is Love Unknown, My Saviour's Love to Me. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen.